AJ Green stole the show in Cincinnati last night with 173 yards and a touchdown in the Bengals 22-7 win over the Dolphins on Thursday night football. Beside Green's big night, Max, you called it, the game was mostly about field goals and poor offense. The NFL has scheduled Thursday night games since 2006. Stephen A, there could be an argument that the NFL is watering down their schedule now with Thursday night. Do you think they need to get rid of these games? I think I never thought they should have had it to begin with. I've always been uh, an adversary to the thir Thursday night games. I think that games, NFL games, should be played on Sundays and Mondays. I think college football games should be played on Saturdays, not Fridays, like, to, like tonight's Washington-Stanford game. And I think Friday night should be reserved for high school. Football is a very physical sport. It's very, very violent. Um, and obviously, it's incredibly complicated uh, as well for a lot of football players out there. You, you're in the film room for a reason. You're studying for a reason, and more importantly, you're trying to give yourself time for your bodies to heal. And since we're talking about nationally televised games, everybody doesn't get to be on Thursday night football. I remember reading a report from Pro Football Talk about a year ago where it talked about uh, disparities that existed um, in terms of nationally televised games, if I remember correctly. I think Buffalo had like 29 and somebody else had like 12. I remember in the 2015 season, it was supposed to be a 16.3 point differential in terms of games being played on Thursday nights compared to the games that were played on Sundays. The quality of football that is played significantly dissipates compared to what you see on Sundays or Monday nights. And I think that when you take that into account, along with supposedly being concerned about player safety and player health, it flies in the face of all of that by having a game on Thursdays. I think when you, you know, people, critics of the NFL that allude to the NFL cartel per se, talking about how they just come up with new and different ways to try and make more money, even though the owners say yes to it because they want the money, religiously almost all of them complain about having to play on a Thursday night because they really 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 do not want to do it and the remedy for it some people have speculated uh, would be only playing a Thursday night game after a bye week the fact that you have to come into all the throw in all of those considerations and that it disrupts your flow and that it potentially puts some teams at a disadvantage when we know good and well that everybody should be playing on the same playing field. Um, I, I just think it's something that's not worth it. It's simply something to make the owners more money. I don't think it's of extra benefit to the fan base out there, and I think it's completely unnecessary. College football should be on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. NFL football should be on Sundays and Mondays. That's the way it used to be. That is the way that it should stay. It should have never been a Thursday night game to begin with as far as I'm yep. concerned. Max, one thing before you respond. Of course, the short week is challenging for everyone, but every team does play a game on Thursday nights, sure. just to be clear on that. You sound like Dana Carvey's grumpy old man from back in the day on Saturday Night Live, Stephen A. I don't like things now compared <laughs> to the way they used to be. Look, um, is it a scheme to make the owners more money? You bet it is. Is it, and, and, and we just got done talking with Will about, uh, about it, and we were debating, you know, the, the nature of exploitation in sports and whether full contact sports are more exploitative than other sports, and I think they are. Will disagreed, but I think they are. Uh, and this is a, a good segue into this conversation because Thursday games in a full contact sport, a dangerous sport, are a little more dangerous. It is added exploitation to line the owner's pockets, sure. But how do the owners line their pockets with money from an interest from the fans? So as a consumer of football, I love Thursday games. Am I getting the same product I'm getting on Sundays or Mondays? Nope, I realize it's an inferior product. Still a pretty good product. I mean, I was playing da you know, Daily Fantasy uh, yesterday with a bunch of friends and watching the game and interested in what happened. And, uh, and you know, it was good. I got football on a Thursday. It used to be. Here's the issue with the NFL. It's basically a once-a-week sport. You know, baseball's every day you get it. Basketball's every other day, but the way the schedules work, you can watch a, a high-level basketball game every day. Football, Saturdays for college football, Sundays for pro football, except that you also get a game on Monday, and then now you have a college game on a Friday, and now you have an NFL game on a Thursday. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you get to scratch that itch. I love it as a fan, as a consumer, I love it. And I, by the way, to just throw your hands up in the air and say, well, you could have it after a bye week, but that takes extra planning. 
So to hell with it. No, well, do a little extra planning. There's nothing wrong with having it after a bye week. Well, a couple of things. First of all, scratching too much ain't good for anybody. That's number one. <laughs> number two, number number Just two, disgusting. number two. You've already you've already acknowledged that playing, you know, playing that Thursday night games are inferior. You know, it's inferior in terms of compared to what we see on Sundays and Mondays. The fact that you have an inferior an inferior product three days earlier speaks to the damage that it could potentially do. That's not what the NFL is supposed to be about. It's supposed to be even killed no matter what. Number three, and more importantly, I don't believe this is a partnership because these are decisions made by the league and the owners, which is why it's called the cartel. I don't know. I think the players, even if they capitulate to it, they acquiesce to it, it's something that is forced upon them as opposed to something that's agreed upon. And that's problematic in and of itself. The fact of the matter is the owners are forcing this. Now, obviously, the players have to sign off on it because the money is there to be made and they want the money. So the NFL makes them play or the owners make them play that Thursday night game. But the reality is, is that if they had their druthers, they would rather play on Sundays or Monday night. And it shouldn't be that their money would be compromised because of it. Look, listen, so preseason I, I agree it. with. The four preseason games is <clears> unnecessary. The players aren't really getting paid for those games anyway. The owners are lining their pockets. It's too much. It's a full contact sport. You want guys on your team hurt, et cetera, yes. But a Thursday game, if everyone has to play it, and as you say, you can line it up after the bye. I mean, there are ways to figure this thing out that make well, more well, sense. Well, by the way, I need clarification. The, the bottom line is this, Stephen A. Do you like football or not? Do you want to watch it on no, a Thursday? No, it's not the bottom line. Do you That's really not the need to pay line. attention to your family on a Thursday night, or can you lose no. yourself in a football game? That's the question. You with the three, I think most you Americans three would daughters say football. You with, the th you, you with the three daughters that miss half the games because of that is going to sit up here and ask, <laughs> do you really want to spend time with your daughter? Very, really, re really, Max? Come on now. But, I but can't Molly, I have you a question. Right now, I, Pookie, I, I, have, I have a question. I have A.J. Green going in the Thursday I, night game. I, I have a I question. Think I have a question. Attention. I have a question yes, before we leave. Yep. When you say everyone plays on a Thursday night, you mean through the course of 17 weeks and 16 games, all 32 teams play at least once on Thursday night? Correct. Yeah, because 16 matchups, okay. 32 teams. Correct. Oh, no, no. I was asking because I, I'm saying that's not, that's not something Correct. I knew. Yeah. All right. Interesting argument, though, because you could argue that it, it waters down the product. And then, of course, bit. if you love it football, does. you want to see more of it. You watched the game last night? Of course. Yeah, me too. I saw that. We, we lost to just about every element of that matchup. They outcoached us. They outplayed us. Uh, they were better fundamentally, tackling and so forth. He's pumping. He is floating it. And it's complete the hump at the 50, the 45. He's on his feet at the 30, the 20. Pass back at the 10, the 5. He is in. Jaron Sproles. We got our ass kicked. I'll simply say it like that. We got work to do, obviously, because we come here with one agenda, and that's to play winning football. And obviously, we didn't do that today. The Steelers are coming off a bad loss to the Eagles in Philly last Sunday, but their offense getting a big boost this weekend. Le'Veon Bell returns from his three-game suspension. Stephen A., what do you expect from the Steelers with Bell returning? Well, first of all, I expect the running game to return. D'Angelo Williams has struggled at least the last couple of weeks or so because he is 33 years of age and he's had a lot. He's had to carry a hefty workload. Uh, but I expect the Steelers' defense to look a little bit better. Uh, Alex Smith doesn't make a lot of mistakes, uh, but he's not a game changer per se, even though he has the potential uh, to do a lot of different things. In the end, what it comes down to is that the Steelers were an absolute embarrassment last week. I was incredibly ashamed of what I saw against the Philadelphia Eagles. They should have been ashamed of themselves. And they should come out ready to play football this week because as far as I'm concerned, they've had two weeks off because they certainly didn't show up last week. It was just a, a, a disgraceful performance, maybe the worst performance I ever saw by this team in a Mike Tomlin era. I think they know it. I think everybody else knows it. And we'll see what happens. Marcus Peters is no joke for Kansas City. Antonio Brown and others should have their work cut out for them. Marcus Wheaton doesn't need to be dropping three passes like he did before. He needs to do better and help out Antonio Brown. Uh, we'll see what happens. But Le'Veon Bell is definitely going to be an upgrade if for no other reason not just because he's gifted but because he brings fresh legs per se <clears throat> to the equation and they desperately need that from the running back spot as well as catching passes out of the backfield I think it helps and I think as a result the Steelers win this game Chiefs are just a good team and I love this game is and it's tempting to take them against the Steelers the way the Steelers looked last week and and given what the Chiefs bring to the table <clears throat> however 
I think, Stephen A., as you pointed out, they were humiliated, the Steelers were. Yes, at Philly, but still in an all-Pennsylvania rivalry type game, they were humiliated. They're coming home. They have the best running back in the game, and apologies to Adrian Peterson even before his weak numbers so far this year, if you want to blame the Minnesota offensive line. But when Le'Veon Bell over the last several seasons has been on the field, I can't believe anyone would argue another running back over him. He is clearly the best running back in the game, all-around running back in the game. You're getting that guy back after you've been humiliated in a rivalry game, uh, a high-profile game because the quality of your opponent. I love this matchup. I think the Steelers win in an overtime-type game. It goes down to the wire, maybe overtime, and I think the Steelers pull it out. I think Le'Veon Bell is a big boost for them. Well, I hope he is because he needs to be. He's got a lot of making up to do because, remember, even though he's coming back, it's not like he was coming back from injury. He got injured last year, missed the second half of the season because of it. He always seems to get injured against Cincinnati because of their low blow, you know, the low blows that they throw in his direction uh, in some fashion. But in this particular game, uh, he's been out for the first three games of the season because he was suspended, you know, weed issues and beyond. So he's got some making up to do. He's got to be dependable. He's got to be somebody that the Steelers can rely upon because a legitimate argument could be made is that the Steelers have underachieved in the years that he's been there mm -hmm. because this wasn't the first time he's been suspended. So he's got to step up to the plate and do everything that he can to make amends. And he clearly has the and their talent defense to do has so, gotta, and I think he'll put it off. Their defense has got to get a lot better. You know, last year it's like, well, if they have a bend but don't break defense and they can stay healthy on offense, maybe they could go all the way. It didn't happen. They couldn't stay healthy on offense. Still really good. And the defense wasn't enough to overcome that this year they showed improvement early against the run and you had reason to believe boy this Pittsburgh defense is coming around and then it was nowhere to be seen against Philadelphia last week so that's the, the big if there is does the Steelers defense show up yep. against the Chiefs assuming it's a bend but don't break style defense I think they can win this game after last week and they're the certainly going to be focused and we know Le'Veon Bell have fresh legs but I want to get to another subject we asked you guys earlier in the show if you are buying Des Bryant's excuse Max and I were buying it. The results are in. America is with Stephen A. 69% say no, not buying Dez's excuse. Stephen A, your thoughts? Well, like I said, I'm not judging him harshly or whatever. My reason for not buying it is that it's still unacceptable. It's only acceptable in the world of Jason Garrett because even though you might say something to reprimand them, at the end of the day, you ain't going to really do anything because no one has any reason to fear Jason Garrett because they consider him a puppet for Jerry Jones. That's really what this comes yep. down to, and they need a firm hand at the head coaching position. It's not Dallas. an issue of me buying the excuse. To quite, it's an immature decision he made. It's a bad decision. He should make better decisions. But it's, does it reflect the right stuff about Des Bryant? Is that the kind of guy you want on your squad? I think the answer is yes. He'll do anything, including avoiding MRIs, whatever, to stay on the field, to stay on the field for his yeah. teammates and his team. You want that guy. And that's also where I agreed with you, not the actual buying it part, but what you just explained.